Okay guys, I just couldn't help myself. Knowing new God of War content is a lifetime away, I just needed to cover the last couple games in the series. I have fond memories of playing these games back on the PSP back in sixth grade, and they hold up just as well as I remember them. Actually, better in the case of Ghost of Sparta. Keeping in the loving tradition of all the God of War games, we're greeted by the classic Kratos Scowl. Or in the later games, Depression. Only respite, his only relief from the sins of his past, was found in the heat of life. God of War has got to be the most consistent storytelling in gaming for as long as it's been going. This little detail comes back around in God of War Valhalla, where even Mimir notices Kratos seems more clear after a fight. So I play this on a PSP version. Had I known about the PS3 collection, I would have gone that way for your viewing pleasure, but oopsie. At least we're getting a closer depiction to what the game was like on the PSP, which is damn impressive. This image shrunk down to 288p looked incredible at the time being in the palm of my hand. It blew me away because in certain ways it almost looked better than the original God of War did on the PS2 and CRT. On a handheld! Chains and Ghost weren't actually developed by Santa Monica, but Ready at Dawn instead. And had I not told you that, you probably would have been none the wiser. The respect and understanding they have of the franchise blows me away. They hit all the correct beats that a God of War game needs, such as the iconic Cyclops coming in right away. Only to bring in the real first boss, because every game in the Greek saga had to start with a big ass boss. Kratos is contractually obligated to fuck up something big at the start of his games. What about 2018? Uh, Atreus, let's go with him. And I'm going to be stressing this constantly throughout. This game was on a fucking PSP. The scale of it all still impresses me to this day. This little piece of hardware took so many hours of my life and I wouldn't trade it for the world. Big fingers crossed that the PS Portal was a litmus test for interest in another Sony handheld. And these cutscenes looked far better on the tiny little screen of the PSP. Going from God of War on the PS2 straight to Chains of Olympus, it would be a seamless experience. There were no missing features that were common with PSP games that started on the PS2. Ah, do I love the clown on QTEs, but I always gotta talk about them though. Still, like in every other God of War video, this series knew how to do them right. Just an interactive cinematic way to end a fight. Spare my life, and I will give you all that you ask. Ah, I bet Kratos sees himself and this guy just a little bit. No wonder he fed him a treasure chest. He would never want that life for anybody else. See, that's to anybody that said Kratos was a bad dude. Interesting we get the Ifrit as our magic from the Persian, as Ifrit is actually from Islamic culture, and this game is set far before the Muslim conquest of Persia. So it seems like an interesting nod to Persia's future. And I do love the Ifrit. It's a little corny looking for what we're used to with Kratos' abilities, but it matches the tone of this smaller game. Man, could you imagine having scenes like this in the modern games? Like we walk in the Svartalfheim to find some bearded ladies ready to be owed. <laughs> uh, different times the early 2000s were. A story I remember with this game in particular is when I was like 10 years old, my dad bought this game for my birthday and I was flaunting the back covers ESRB of nudity to my very Christian conservative grandparents. In hindsight, cringe and boy, I bet my dad felt judged by his parents. So, uh, thanks dad. God of War was very engaging as a kid. I did it for the orbs and the content, okay? Don't make it weird. Actually, my girlfriend walked in while I was performing that scene, so it was weird enough already. Oh, I'm getting flashbacks to the Return of the King PS2 game. Should I cover those banger EA games? Should we start digging through the ginormous PS2 library for some throwback bangers? I never realized as a kid that these were the early days of the squeeze through a wall sections to mask loading screens. Gotta say, mission accomplished. Even this freaking handheld has no loading screens. Okay, I guess I haven't talked about the gameplay yet. It's quite literally a one-to-one -one translation of what we know God of War to be just shrunk down for a handheld. It's up there as one of the best looking PSP games ever made and Ready at Dawn should be proud of that fact. We don't get as many elaborate puzzles and the game's focus is more on combat. I think that's perfect for a pick up and put down nature of the PSP. Do a couple combats, waiting at the doctor's office and move on. Don't stick your Kratos in that friends. There's almost unlimited potential if Santa Monica ever just wanted to make some more old school God of War games. Just say, Kratos is doing X job for the gods, or Ares, and boom, we got an adventure a la Uncharted. I really like this cold open before diving into the main plot of the game. That's pretty creative. Forcing the basilisk to explode itself by forcing its mouth shut. Kratos has always been smarter than people give him credit for. Is this all you would have me do? Is there no one else? It's crazy to think that back when these games came out, they were considered the pinnacle of core. Now they just seem like laughable cartoons to me with how sophisticated everything has become. Or does that just an indictment on my ever-growing desensitization? 
I freaking love these pull-ups that the old God of Wars always had. Nothing will compare to running to the steeds of time and two, but still. The temple. It became clear that the task ahead was more than he could have ever imagined. Chains pulls back on a lot of cutscenes and dialogue and brings in a lot more narration, which I think was the perfect balance of keeping a narrative flowing while not having to spend the limited PSP resources on such scenes. Olympus needs you. I grow tired of the gods' request, Athena. It's so awesome that the OG cast came back to voice their roles. It gives much needed consistency. If Kratos has someone doing an imitation of him, I don't think anyone would give these handheld games the time of day. TC Carson is just too good to replace. Unless you make his character a dad in the future. Many of the gods have fallen into a deep slumber. <laughs> they avoided the question of where are the other Avengers at in the solo movies right quick. And it isn't all perfect. Some concessions did have to be made, like this here. We can't get beyond the door because of an unreachable enemy throwing bullshit at us. Like, seriously, you guys couldn't think of anything else? But it was satisfying to kill this little bitch ass, so let's call it even. And just like any good God of War game, we are constantly throwing new enemy types as we progress through the entire game. God, any elevator in these games can be PTSD. Good night, you trial of Archimedes. The Titan Atlas has been freed from the pits of Tartarus. Give Kratos a, like about 12 years and he'd be cheering with this information. If you ever wondered what the stuff in Valhalla was about with Helios, this game pretty much answers all those questions. <laughs> not much. Saves them. That about sums it up. But it's about the journey, not the destination. Play these games! You know I love me some center framing, spiral staircase, fixed camera goodness. Everybody's here, down to the menu and upgrade system. I seriously love how simple the older God of War games were. Just one economy source and trickled gear that gets better upgrades. No builds to contend with or theory crafted. Just straight up, I kill things better now. <laughs> I guess if you didn't know, this is actually a prequel to God of War 1. We don't have some Poseidon's Trident yet, and Ready at Dawn really wanted to play with water, so here we are. Along with the Cyclops, the Minotaur is the second iconic enemy of God of War. Nothing beats him. Gotta have him. The king of the gods does not aid me, Eos. I am but a slave to Zeus and Olympus. This game's story is pretty simple and short by virtue of the platform it was developed for, but I think it brings two really important humanizing aspects to his character. The first being his contempt for his position as the god's pit boy. Seeing that he isn't just a rage monster as much as the first two games leads us to believe. And the second, his undying love for his daughter. He would rather go back, save the gods, and continue to be shackled by them if that means his daughter can live on in the Elysian fields. That's kind of hot, not gonna lie. May you go with the speed of Hermes, ghost of Sparta. That's not saying much, really. Dude was a punk-ass bitch hey! in three. Love a good, satisfying parry system. And also, nonsensical level design. Kratos is like a shark. Always forward, never back. Seriously, this dude would rather destroy these statues for no reason than go the proper way. Huh, so I guess God of War 2018 isn't the first time he has dealt with light bridges. If there's any line about that in the game, let me know down below the like button. I remember loving this section as a kid because Ready at Dawn just throws the easiest like 8k orbs at us because reasons. Our premier puzzle of the game, nothing to shake your ass about, but just enough to get the noodle working. I'll take it. Calliope. Calliope? My daughter, where are you? And another element that I really like Chains of Olympus and Ghost of Sparta for, that matter, was seeing more of Kratos' relations with his family in real time. We always just hear about them in the other games, but in these two, we get to see him directly confront them. I'm sure there was a lot of parody between the PSP and the PS2 to make porting over assets a simple job for Ready at Dawn. Kratos feels exactly as good as he did in the other games. The animations feel ripped straight from God of War 1, making the already great combat... Well, great, but on the go. Clypey is actually a type of instrument, but not anything really resembling this flute that she plays. But also, the name is that of a Greek muse who presides over eloquence and epic poetry. Fitting, as her death is what caused us to experience this epic with Kratos. Even when dude isn't trying to, he ends up in 80s. I am a slave to no one, Charon. Kratos is quite well read, I gotta say. Dude knows everyone and talks to them with such familiarity. Ah, there we go. Actually dying and being sent down to Hades. I was worried there for a sec. Is it just me? As a kid, seeing the designs of the big three get consistent was pretty neat to see. Ready at Dawn knows exactly where Kratos keeps all his gear. The Gauntlet of Zeus with the Nemean Kestis before they were cool. And what I've always loved in these handheld games is just how ridiculously powerful our second weapon is. And only one question plagued the thoughts of Kratos. Who would release such evil? You know you f***ed up when Kratos, of all people, was asking this question. Seems like Hades talked to Osha and removed those fucking blade climbs. Even he felt it was too difficult to escape the underworld. The war 
walls of Tartarus would not hold Atlas, and they would not hold me either. Sound familiar? Sisters of fate could not hold me. God of War 3 was like, dude, can I copy your homework? And Ready at Dawn was like, sure, just change it a little. <laughs> God damn, did they make this Kratos chiseled. Who needs the blades with a jawline like that? <laughs> Laughing children that disappear around corners is always f***ing <gasps> creepy no matter the context. Calliope, where are you? How much does that gotta mess with someone's head, searching for your daughter whose ashes bleach your skin? The gods on Olympus failed me too, Kratos. I was betrayed by Zeus and tricked by my husband, Hades. The entire theme around Chains of Olympus is just that, servitude. Seeing the Olympians for who they truly are. The Titans shackled in Tartarus, Charon forced into his position as Ferryman and Persephone here. And just like Kratos will be soon, they're all far too angry with the gods to hear reason and view him as a threat, even though he shares their same fate in Chains. Playing through the main trilogy, it could seem like Kratos is really only the one that had to deal with the gods, but Chains of Olympus opens it up so much more. I care little for the world and its suffering. And boy, does he make that clear later. Playing through all the older games and knowing where he ends up in Valhalla makes me love this scene more, knowing his growth. Interesting that Kratos loses his tattoo and his ashen skin alongside his strength and weapons. The Elysian Fields are to the Greeks what Valhalla is to the Norse, living in everlasting happiness. Kratos is stripped away of all of which he blames himself for, along with his weapons of destruction. Serving yourself before the needs of others has always been your flaw. Though Valhalla did feel like a recontextualization of his choice to ask Ares for aid, it still fits perfectly here. Kratos has only ever served himself when and only when he has no one and nothing else. In God of War 1, he saves Sparta by making a deal with Ares. In God of War 2, he's left with nothing after being betrayed, but we see him soften up when he's tricked into killing the last Spartan and talking with him. In 3, he finds Pandora to live for. Ghost of Sparta is all about serving his brother and now here with Calliope, sacrificing any more time with her to save the world. My long-winded point being Kratos has always been more than a rage monster and though he's done terrible things, he isn't all self-serving, which makes Persephone's judgment of him quite fun to analyze because she's just jaded and that's just flat out wrong. She is what Kratos will become in God of War 3. Do you think it was my choice to wed a man I did not love? I dig how we see your empty ring finger as she states this. In your selfish choice to be with your daughter, you have caused her ruin. Uh, I don't know. You made it sound like a slam dunk of a deal. You could spin that as self-serving, but how is he supposed to know? <laughs> oh, she's bad. Ruin. No. Dolly zoom for emphasis. Press O to abandon child hits almost as hard as press F to pay respects. Ironic that to save the world, Kratos must become the monster. To me, his destiny was not with Calliope. The fates were never that kind. Like I said, Kratos has had to endure so much. To finally see his daughter again after wearing her for so long like Ed Gein, to have that joy and immediately have to abandon her is an impossible ask. But he bears up and does it because he's a man. Scenes like this remind me more of why Kratos was so cold to Atreus. Atreus? <laughs> Atreus growing up. It wasn't just to protect his son from being like him, but to protect himself from ever feeling this pain again. <laughs> Gotta throw a win in here for just how iconic and badass the OG theme is. <laughs> now that takes some balls to actively choose to fight Kratos, he was falling. Something that really makes this game hold up over the years is that they aren't going for an overly realistic art style. You can especially see it with Atlas. It's more of a watercolor painterly style. With this, we aren't having to look at low resolution textures and crunch. You'll see this also with Ghost of Sparta. These games are kind of like Greek revisionist history. It was Kratos that made Atlas hold up the world this time, which is pretty badass. In the OG myth, Atlas was just immediately condemned to hold up the world by the gods after the Titan. Here, once again, Kratos is unwittingly doing the bidding of the gods, locking him in his servitude. And not Kratos just casually taking a break from his fight with Persephone to chain up Atlas real quick. You know I gotta win the sauce. What good is the promise of an Olympian? It is all I have, Atlas! You hear that? That's why after the end of the first game, he starts the second playing a monster. Granted, the boat captain was pretty rough, but Kratos is trying to move beyond and shed this life. As the sun chariot rose higher in the sky, and the might of Helios shone once again on the world. <laughs> I love how the main plot of the game is just wrapped up in a voiceover and a picture. It is a PSP game after all, but I like that once the story really comes into focus right at the end, we don't waste any time on the Helios stuff. Chris being in the chains of Olympus is what the game was giving us more depth on. 
Not some sun gods. Chains of Olympus is a short and sweet game. I remember being able to bring God of War with me everywhere I go as a kid. It was a dream come true. Playing in school or on the bus or just at home relaxing on the couch. The PSP was one badass console that I dumped hundreds of hours into. Looking at you, Monster Hunter Freedom Unite. The story here isn't the most compelling, but it wasn't trying to be. Hell, it doesn't even really happen until the final 30 minutes of the game and a few scenes with Athena. But it's a handheld back in 08. Half the time, you're playing with the audio muted and a loud commute. It does exactly what it sets out to do, and that was perfectly translate the God of War formula to the small screen, and boy, it is, it is perfect. The combos, magic, platforming, and puzzles all aren't missing a drop. Say this game looked just like God of War 1 or 2 visually, with its same PSP mechanics behind it, you would not be able to tell the difference. And that's just a testament to Ready at Dawn as much as it is to just the PSP platform itself. I'm still amazed that something as small as that was able to keep up with the PS2 graphically. Change of Olympus was Ready at Dawn getting their feet wet with the franchise and seeing if this was even possible. Ghost of Sparta is where they really started to fall. So make sure to subscribe to see when that video drops soon. Let's all talk about our PSP experiences down below. And as always, drive the speed limit, drink some water, and love one another. If you want to check out my coverage over the OG God of War trilogy, you can click on the video on the left to see all three in one big video, or click on the right to see my coverage of the God of War Ragnarok. Get some snacks if you do that one, because it's a long one. Pizza, everybody.